You are listening to the Kinetic Man Podcast. I'm Stuart. And I'm David. And we want to walk with you on the journey to living a life defined by uncommon action that is full of purpose, adventure, and meaningful relationships. Our goal is to refine our why while helping you find yours and together achieve our best and highest purpose. In the end, we'll drive each other to leave the potential life behind and become kinetic men. Howdy, partner. Yo. Oh, dang. We got some Texas. We got some How Texas going. You've been in Texas for like 10 How years. Y'all doing? How y'all doing? Uh, uh, dub, double Chuck. Partner. Howdy. <laughs> ding, ding. Uh, fickle flag. I'm back. I don't know. Ding, ding. I'm, fickle flag. I'm back from Did Texas. you guys say that in Texas a lot? No, we, dang, don't, say, dang. we don't say the ding, dang, fickle flag. Like, Flick of flax and the up, up ting to the wang wang. What? What, what, what does that mean? Exactly, dude. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. I have no idea what it means. That's just what I hear. Mm. And something about my dog ran away and my wife did too. And up, up, double chuck, me and you and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I hear. I feel like you're judging. Well, I can't. I, I, no, I'm not judging. It's what I hear. It's what I here i can't i can't How do you help hear hear from what where do you hear that from y'all from y'all <laughs> that's what i hear Who although y'all? i gotta say he's not from texas he's from oklahoma which i know there's a, a rivalry there but i've been listening to a lot of i've been listening to much more country lately a little zach bryan dude he's little, legit uh, he is legit he was a navy he was although, a navy guy you know he was a navy guy yeah, first class, first class petty officer. Yeah, man. Um, and I think he, I think he likes to. I think singing for him was was fun. It was a priority, and it was an outlet for him, and it was it was something important. You know what I mean? For sure, that was a good transition. Good transition. Yeah, uh, you know, we're wrapping up fun month, and uh, again, it, it happens. I guess every year we hit these about on a yearly basis or yeah. uh, each topic in the connect life circle. And uh, again, dude, when we wrapped up last week's call, some guys kind of highlighted their experience this month or this past month with fun. And um, it, it's, it's always interesting to me how, and one of the guys in particular said, dude, these two months back to back are, are just so impactful. He's gone through it a couple of times and he's just like, they're so impactful for me. And, and I've changed, I've literally changed so much of my life uh, based on these two topics. And it's just, it's just a, a really cool thing to hear from somebody who, you know, we deeply respect and is, is a very, like he's a man of action. Right. Yeah. Um, and the first topic and, and was, specifically was friends, it was friends and then fun. That's kind of the order we go in. Yeah. Friends and then fun. Um, and, and specifically talking about, uh, you know, Lyle head is, is one of those guys who through, through the things that he's done has, has really inspired you know, has inspired me and, and, and he highlighted, uh, you know, he's in Costa Rica and he was highlighting how his, his focus on friends and fun has also extended. I mean, he wasn't saying this, this is me distilling what he was saying and then kind of feeding it back to him. But, um, but basically he's had a number of people travel all the way to Costa Rica to see him, to visit him. And and we talk about this idea of intentionality and friendship and fun as as creating a as being a magnet, right? You, you become a magnet. You attract people to you instead of push people away, and and not just you know in your personal life, but but this also impacts everything else. This impacts inside your home and outside your home, and and so many of us, you know, we talked about it uh, briefly on on a previous podcast, but but I just want to I just want to re reiterate. When we define, you know, we define everything. I mean, it's been important. You know, I had a conversation. This is interesting. I had a conversation. I think we should test everything. The Bible says that. Uh, I had a conversation the other day. Um, and not, not. It was, it was a political conversation. It was about uh, Kamala Harris, and and this individual had, had highlighted how her, you know, she, he highlighted a very specific point about her record and whatever. And and I and in the past, and even this time, I was kind of tempted to to weigh in with my opinion. It was interesting. I did this for myself. I'm not a pro or, or anti any of these folks uh, on this podcast, but but I was like, you know what? Test it, test it. And I looked it up. <laughs> I looked it up right after the conversation. I'm like, man, we have such strong opinions about things we know nothing about. And and then you, it's a cycle. You get into these conversations, right? And so it was just a, it it just really hit me hard again on why it's so important to 
to test, to define, to look up, to challenge what we think the definition, even if something as simple as a definition or a record, like like, like a, de a definition is public knowledge, right? A, a definition, you go to a dictionary. Well, nobody goes to dictionaries anymore. You, you go to dictionary.com <laughs> and you, Google. and you, you, you die, yeah, you Google and you dive into what it means. And so fun, very, very similar. And I brought up the, the political conversation because it has just as much, it has just as many ramifications and it has, it, it, it has uh, just as much, um, it has just as much influence and power and significance to understand a, a definition and a true meaning of something just as it does that it feeds our opinions of other people and how we feel and our political bent and all the things that we, we claim are so important. And so most people are not going to Google or look up fun, but that's, that's the first thing we do in the first week is challenge that. Right. And, and one of the things that stuck out to me about the definition of fun is, you know, it, it's, I'll just read it. Uh, what provides amusement or enjoyment, specifically playful, often boisterous action or speech, a mood for finding or making amusement. What stuck out to me is all the action verbs in fun, not action like go have fun, go play sports, not, not that, but the, the intentionality of creating fun in your life. It's not something most of us are happy to be um, uh, either spectators or... Uh, you know, you sent a picture during fun month of you in the pool. There's all these kids, whatever. There's kids in, in, in the pool. And you you captioned it. You said, only dad in the pool, um, you know, not on my cell phone. Like you're the only dad, literally the only dad in the pool on a, a hot day. Yeah. You weren't the only dad at the pool. You're only the dad in the pool. Yeah. And 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 I think it's – it's um. Actually, there weren't any moms in the pool either, so I'm not. I'm just not just not just beating up dads, right? Right. Uh, but but a lot of us are happy to be spectators to or be invited into fun. We don't we don't emphasize it enough in our own lives to be the catalyst and the creator of fun and and, and to the definition the the one that is responsible for the action or speech for fun. Or the person who's responsible for um, finding or making amusement; those those are in the definition. And, and I think it's it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty powerful thing that once you embrace it, then you can truly start to test it. You can't often test in your own life something that you're just uh, a party to. It's harder to test, right? You have to you have to really you can test things that you are that you take responsibility for and that you then, um, you know, action result, right? And if then, like when I, then this happens, that's much easier to assess the importance of that in your life if you're willing to be the 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 the, the catalyst to do those things. And, and, and in that light, I think two things came up that, that were really interesting. It was, one, it was recognizing when you do that the impact you have on others and acknowledging that that was an interesting conversation. And then there was an interesting conversation around risk uh, that I think is, is, was, was really fascinating. And, and, and again, something like is fun. I found myself, I found myself during the conversations being like, Oh, I just strongly disagree. Like, like I, I, it was, I had it as, as a real experience of, of emotion towards some of the things we were all saying and, and, and you know, arguing about whatever debating, as I do about things that like, like politics, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, oh man, that's, I, I strongly object <laughs> to, to that statement or whatever. And it was this, this topic of fun really brought out some of those uh, just deep conversations. And, and it, and for me again, it hit hard. It hit hard this month on, um, even when the midst of yelling at my kids, fun popped in my head, like, Hey, how do I <laughs> not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you, you like, Oh, uh, you know, what? I just want to be fun all the time. There's no discipline like that. That's not at all. But can I inject some, some fun into it? Like, is there a way that may be different than what I'm doing? Because most likely what I'm doing in that moment, if I'm to the level of wanting to like yell at my kids clearly isn't working. And so how do you. How do you adjust with the power of these things? Yeah, man, I, th I thought it was um, 
one of the comments that I thought was really interesting, it, it, it gave me some uh, real insight into this topic of fun. Um, one, of, one of the guys said that he has a hard time prioritizing fun. He has a hard time having fun because often uh, he has other things on his mind, right? He, he can't really ever have fun because he has his to-do list, his, his work, um, you know, what he, what he has to accomplish that day uh, in his brain. And so he can never really get focused on having fun, you know, specifically when it like gets, when it's requiring you know, creativity or make believe with his kids or if it's something that he doesn't really just enjoy doing as much, but he's trying to do it for for his kids or for his spouse or something. And that kind of came to uh, some experience that I had when I was in Texas with my family. Um, my my brother-in-law and sister-in-law have gotten into pickleball. And uh, they, they go to um, these public courts uh, in a park near their house and – um, it's kind of like round robin tournament style. Like you just put your paddle into in this line and then like next court up you go and play and it's a doubles. So it's like they always play with each other and they're always playing random people and they've started to go over and over again. And they started, they've, you know, they're now they're like, it's like, it's like a little community, like a little tribe. Like they see the same people over and over again. You start to get to know people. And um, my, my sister-in-law specifically said, this is really good for us because you know, she's like super busy at work all the time. She's in the middle of a busy season. She runs the, um, the Dallas Children's Advocacy Center and they're they're putting a conference on in, in August. And she said, this is really good for me because it allows me to, to break free from um, thinking about work, right? It, it allows me to um, put everything else aside and just uh, be present with her husband, with, with my brother-in-law and, and enjoy each other's time. And I think a lot of that, you know, the, the fun aspect of it is just about being present, right? It's just about being focused and present there with whoever you're doing it with. And I think that's something that a lot of us, as we, as we, you know, go into adulthood, we have more responsibilities, we get into work, we're wanting to provide. I think that's really hard for us to do. And I think that's why we stop to prioritize fun as much is because we have so much else in our brain, our to-do list, and we have a really hard time just being present and focused and intentional in that time, right? That bucket of time to have fun and be present. And I think that's what like our relationships, that's what they need. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's pickleball or you know mountain biking or a pillow fight or a dance party or just like hanging out with each other, our relationships need us to be present. They need us to be like all in on the relationship and whatever they're doing at the time. And I think that's where we really lose out uh, in this topic of having fun is we don't have fun because we have so much else on our brain. And that's what I think we really need to focus in on and work on is like being present and being there in the moment at the time, not thinking about the future, not thinking about the past, just think, just being there. Yeah. You know, as you were talking about that, I was thinking about the things that require in my life. And then at your example, two hands. And, and what I mean by that is it's really hard to, to have a cell phone when you're playing pickleball. Yeah, and I thought about this yesterday. I took uh, Noah, so we bought some. I bought some paddle boards, some cheap paddle boards, and Erica's like, "Are you know?" Her initial response was, "Are we going to use these?" I'm like, "Yeah." There's a, there's literally like right across the street where you and I mountain bike ride. Yeah, there's a there's a a, pl- yeah, there's a, a reservoir, a right? Lake. Yeah, it's and it's not huge. It's just a little lake that that people are on all summer. We never, I've never taken advantage of it. I mean, this is right across the street. And, uh, and so I'm like, yeah, you know, we're going to go do that. And, and so we've been doing that. We, we've gone on a couple camp trips, taking the paddle boards. It's been awesome. Like it's been absolutely incredible. One of my kids floated across a giant lake and ended up in a rock quarry. Uh, that different story. <laughs> that was the same, same weekend that they Jake, went and climbed. Jake and his buddy climbed that giant yeah. boulder thing. 
um the next day they got on and it's windy there and it blew them across and they couldn't get back and it was a whole other rescue mission like i literally was like oh my gosh we're like we're i'm gonna have to find the ranger who has a boat because that was that was a huge reservoir um it, but but i was like you know what if i had two paddle boards it wouldn't be an issue i would just paddleboard out and bring them back and so the, after that weekend i bought a couple paddle boards and uh but i went yesterday i took one of the neighbor boys and took Noah and, and we went to that little lake, played in the sand. Um, and I was, I was thinking about it. I, I got them both on the paddleboard and we paddled across and all, having all kinds of fun. They're having a blast, dude, having a blast. And I, and I was like, man, I wish I could take a picture of this. Just, just, I really want to send it to the other kid's mom and, and to Erica. Uh, but, but, it, but paddling required two hands and I wasn't going to have my cell phone in my pocket um on a paddleboard right like that's just a, a bad idea with three people on the paddleboard by the yeah. way and 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 my and i thought about it yesterday um just i guess coincidentally i was like man it's 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 interesting how how i am i have zero distraction right now from just being with these boys and having a blast we're all laughing we're all having a good time <clears throat> excuse me and 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 a big part of it is because two hands are required and there's no cell phone uh even for pictures right and it, it just, it, it, I don't want to, to bash the cell phone, but I was thinking about it again yesterday. Just my son are playing this dumb game we made up of like spreading out marbles on the ground and then like just seeing who could grab the most marbles. Like it was, it was just a random game. We just made up. I don't even know Instead where it pick came up from. Sticks, it's pick up marbles. Just, yeah. Just grab marbles and we start wrestling and fighting over each other's marbles. I had a great time. But the times I went upstairs with my phone to do that game and the times I didn't were very different experiences. And it's not, it's not the phone. It's whatever it is. It just happens to be probably one of the biggest culprits today that, that makes you not present. And, and one of the things that a lot of the dudes talked about too, was they, they contrasted fun with providing. And I thought that was interesting. It, it's always part of the conversation. Well, yep. because most dudes are like, well, fun means I'm out doing something with other people. Like I'm out. Like I think most guys just think fun is, is a direct, uh, is in direct competition from a time perspective with work. Right. Or quote unquote providing. And we challenge them. We're like, okay, so who's going to provide the example for your kids on how to have fun? Like who's going to provide the example for your kids on not being a workaholic? Like what is the example you're providing right now? just challenge it. Right. Are, are you, are you, is when they think of dad, is it, oh, uh, dad's gone all day. He's at work. And then when he is home, he's not present because he's working. Like, is that, and is that the example you want to set? Because you might as well be honest about it. Right. You might as well be honest on the, you know, talk about providing, what are you providing? Okay, cool. You're providing money. Um, you're providing uh roof over kids' heads, clothes, all that. Yeah. Great. But are you providing an example of what a lifestyle that you want them to live? Like, think about that. Ask that question, right? And if you're not, then what has to change? And if you need help, ask them. Ask them. And 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 they'll they'll tell you the truth on what they want from you as a dad. And a lot of times, when you peel peel the onion back, they want to be they want to have fun with you, right? That that it's it's a critical aspect of development is play and fun. And that's what they want. And, and our friendships too, right? Like if you and I didn't, like if you were a video gamer, nothing against video gaming. I just, that's not what I do for fun. If, if that's what you did for fun and that's how you got energy and you define that, like you and I wouldn't hang out as much. Like we just right. wouldn't do things together and, and that's okay. But there would be a direct impact on our friendship. hundred percent. Like it just is what it is. And so when we're also not investing in our friends, it, it just depends if you want friends or not, right? And if you don't, like who doesn't want friends though? <laughs> like, who, who's the person, like, even the most introverted person is not like, I, I don't want any friends. No, you just find other introverted people that are, or then you have to be interested, uh, introverted. They just, you find other people that are interested in the things you're interested in, regardless of your personality type. It's important. It's critical. Uh, and I think there's, I think we just don't take this stuff serious enough.
right? Yeah. I just don't think we take this stuff serious enough, but we, but we won't hesitate to pick up our phone and be whatever distracted by like stupid stuff. Most of the time, if we're honest with ourselves, you're not, you're not, you're not doing money-making activities. You're, you're, you're being diverted from uh, attention to those who are most important with you to, to watch TikTok and YouTube and, and stupid stuff. Right. I heard, um, so, I heard someone say that the definition of frustration is a goal hindered by distraction. Like if you think about mm. it, if you have a goal and you're hindered from a distraction, you get frustrated. And I'm thinking like kind of through like just everyday experiences in our life. If I have a goal of looking at my phone and reading an email and a kid comes up to me and wants to play and I say no, and he keeps on wanting to play and I have a cell phone in front of my face, I get frustrated because I'm getting distracted from the goal of like reading my email or whatever, right? And, and in that same conversation, I heard that, so the goal is to do things, do as many things as possible that don't require the use of a cell phone, right? To your point, the two hands, right? Do things that require two hands. If you can't have a cell phone in front of your face and you're more present with what you're doing, having fun or whatever it is, you're going to have less frustration because you're not being distracted by the phone. Yeah. Well, and also, and we made this point, we made this, this, we made this point in our conversation. You can have fun at work. There are aspects of work that can be really fun. Sure. And, and, and we challenge each other and these men. Okay. Like look at work. So, so don't, when we say, what do you do for fun? A lot of dudes, especially the first year guys through this process are the uh, work. I love work. Work. Yeah. Okay. Like that's like saying I I love lamp, right? Like it's just it's so broad. It's not yeah. it doesn't mean anything. I love work. Like you love okay, so you so work is fun. So everything you do in work is fun. Like it, just everything is like it's a cop out. It's a cop out. I challenge dudes to be like, "Hey, what about work do you do you love and find fun?" Because if you can really hone in, not and this this conversation goes much more profound profoundly to to purpose and why. So, so if you find it fun to analyze deals in real estate, you're a real estate guy, and that's fun for you, like that, that's cool, right? That's cool. And and understanding, I love the aspect of work where I analyze deals. I hate the dealing with contractors and this and that and the other, but I love this part of it. Well, now you can pour, you can actually pour into a gifting. You can be like, okay, why do I love this? Well. God has blessed me with, uh, you know, an ability to, to organize deals and analyze things different ways. And he's blessed me in, with the specific set of gifts. And, and I don't have these other gifts. Dude, the, the, the deeper you, you pour into that stuff, the fun is a great indicator of, of potentially passion and gifting. And as you dive in, if you can really be like, hey, I'm really good at this thing. I'm passionate about it. And this should be my contribution to the team. Like that's powerful. And I don't like this stuff and, and we should either partner or hire this stuff away. Like I was talking to a dude the, um, on the football field the other day, his son plays for me. And he's like, man, I'm, I'm a partner. I'm a CPA. I'm just like, what do you do? And he's like, I'm a CPA and I'm a part, I'm a partner at this firm. And, and I was like, oh, my buddy's a CPA. I was talking about Mikey and I was like, uh, you know, he goes, oh, what does he do? And, he, and I said, well, he does tax. And he's like, dude, I need a tax guy. So bad. like, if you, I would love a connection. I would love a connection because I told him like, Mike's a very good tax CPA. And he's like, dude, I, I'd offer like, I, I need a partner. I need a partner in my firm who does tax. Like that's a very powerful conversation. If I'm just like, oh, he's a CPA. And he's like, well, I'm a CPA. Like there's no, he, he doesn't know that he, that doesn't mean really anything. I, I love work. I love lamp. Blue is cool. Right. But when I said he's a tax professional, has been doing it for 20 years, and, and I told him some of the places that he worked, he's like, I would love someone just like that, that guy, because it's very specific to a skill set and and it's 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 directly uh directly tied to a passion and a and a and a purpose and a why and also something that that Mikey and these CPAs strangely love which I, I can't wrap my head around but all that being said it it's 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 not just i love it shows a lack of self-awareness to just be like oh, i just love work like nobody loves every aspect of their work right, right? 
And so, and, and, and we also said, Hey, like when you're working, you're working. Like if you do have to do the email thing, I also think, and say email is like your, your gift and your, your, you love email, like hypothetically, you shouldn't be distracted from that by your kids and every, and, and there's a time and a place for everything. And the more deeply you think about these things and the more you use things like fun as an indicator of passion, purpose, and why, and also as a, as a mechanism and, and a tool to bring togetherness and to drive being a catalyst for a deeper relationship, which fun is, a, is, is, I don't know of many, many things that are more powerful than that, right? The more intentional and powerful you can be as a kinetic person, period. And that's where the power of this, 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 uh, this conversation, this topic, I think is, 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 is so relevant because it, it really can challenge you and drive you to deeper waters in, in every aspect of your life. And, and it's something we just dismiss. And oftentimes we dismiss it with things in areas that it would be extremely relevant and could up your game exponentially. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so there's just, you know, it, it, it it's a fascinating conversation, dude. It, it, it really, and again, it challenged me like, like it has me looking at things too in my own life to, to, to invest as a Christian, as a godly man, as an influence and, and to really serve others in a point of their life. And, and I'll tell you, here's a great exercise. Let's, let's make it practical. What do we force the dudes to do? Right. And it was funny because one of the guys even kind of like, he kind of challenged it and then we challenged him back, which is my favorite. But we're like, dude, this has to make your calendar. And he's like, it feels weird to schedule fun. Yeah, to schedule fun. Yeah. Well, and I'm like, okay, well, so what do you want? What do you want fun to be? Ah, spontaneous and blah, blah, blah. And like this question is a great question that always trips all of us up. All right, cool. Like how often are you doing that? Yeah. Like how often do you have spontaneous, intentional fun that is deeply meaningful? What? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody knows. Like, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm too distracted to, to keep track of it. Like it doesn't, but if it, but if it hits your calendar and is like, no kidding, there's also an element of that to that. That's exciting. Right. Like, Hey kids, like we've had on our calendar, we're going to go on a four day float trip next week. It's been on our calendar for months and, and other families are excited about it. I was talking to a family yesterday. It's like, Oh, I, uh, I want to do that. I want to do that with you guys. I'm like, ah, it's too late now, but next year, like we're already building community around this thing that's on the calendar. I mean, if I left that to spontaneity, like the kids aren't like, when are we going? When are we going? Like this yeah. could be awesome. I didn't get that invite. What's up? You did not. Yeah. Why, why did, did I? Why was I not invited? So uh, in all honesty, I didn't invite anybody because I was an invitee. But what's cool, this family that invited us, they're like, dude, bring whomever. And I had zero confidence. I'm like, dude, I want to do this for, I've never done this. Like I'm responsible for my boat and my family floating down a river. Like I have no experience with this. It, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, I think it's a pretty basic river. No, I don't think it is a basic river. It's chill. Um, but the last time he took us on the, you know, we went with him last year on a different trip and he took us down like love, you know, cat, cat three and four rapids. And I'm like, dude, I, this is not that right. It's like, yeah, no, dude, this is not that. I'm like, okay. But next year I intend to, he's like, dude, bring whomever. It becomes like a thing, right? Like you get yeah. five families and you're all sharing meals and you're just trying to figure it out. And um, yeah, man, it's, 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 uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I bet your wife would shoot that down. I'm just throwing that out. There. Yeah. But, but, but maybe not. And, and regardless, it's a plan. It's on the calendar. The kids ask about it. It's exciting. It's on the calendar. It doesn't make it any less exciting. It makes it more exciting because now there's anticipation built right. for this thing, right? And so, you know, we I challenge any listener to do three the same three things we challenge our dudes. Hey, man, schedule fun for your family, for uh, with friends, and and for yourself. But schedule it, like, dude. If you and I don't schedule mountain biking and snowboarding, like, when are we gonna go? Yeah, it doesn't happen. It never happens. 
right? Yeah. It never happens. We have a laundry list of to-do items for for our, for our multiple businesses, and those are just going to continue to to make the calendar. I think someone said, yeah. uh, if you don't if you don't make a priority on your calendar, somebody else will. All right, something else will. Somebody else will. Somebody else will put something on the calendar or something else like you know emails or taxes or your your checklist to do items that's going to make the list that's going to make the calendar over whatever else you do um speaking of speaking of wives i, I want to talk about the this topic of risk because i know i know that was probably one of the the things that you disagreed with a little bit in our conversation you weren't actually able to make that make that call but you said you you listened to it afterwards i'm i'm guessing you had some um thoughts on it um so this month of of uh, fun month, you and I went on a bike ride and we were having fun, and uh, I got a little too aggressive having fun, and uh, um, had had a crash uh, to the point where I hurt myself uh, pretty bad, and um, ended up in the ER, uh, broke some bones, and I'm now you know kind of down for the count for a while, and um, you know. Day one of that, you know, being in the ER and uh, being laid up and hurt, my my wife was, um, you know, caring to me and and you know everything else uh, associated with that. And but day two, like that uh, that like caring for and like that empathy kind of went away to the point of like the opposite of like she was mad at me. She was she was mad at me for like getting hurt of having fun because it impacted her in a major way. It impacted her in our household, uh, around you know helping with the kids, doing chores, um, you know things that we also had planned on our calendar. It impacted that. It almost impacted us going to Texas to see family because if I'd have had to have surgery, that have changed the entire trajectory of the rest of the summer. And so this idea and this thought came up of like, well, is it worth it? Right? Is like at what point? At what point of having fun? Is it worth the possibility, the risk of of getting hurt, or even dying, right? Uh, because I, I I fell pretty hard, and uh, I looked at my helmet, and the back of my helmet was was all dented up and scratched. So I landed on my I landed on the back of my head. If I would have had a helmet, like that could have been a really really bad day, right? And I know I don't want to get into like the what if scenario, but my 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 spouse goes there. You know what if. You know, you would have died. What if this? What if this? And, um, you know, I don't want to get to that level, but like the question came up of like, well, what, what's that level? What's that balance? What's the, what's the risk versus reward level of doing fun versus potentially getting hurt and being down for the count for eight weeks or, or dying? You know, like we, we've gone and climbed 14ers before. Well, a friend of ours recommended, that we go climb this 14er uh, in August, that's pretty dangerous. Like people die on this mountain every single year. And so now I'm like, well, I really like climbing 14ers, but is it worth it to go climb this 14er where people have died on it before just to have some fun? Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it or not. Is that risk worth it? And we got into the topic of motorcycles. You know, two of the guys on our call were like, yeah, I love riding motorcycles, but I stopped riding motorcycles because there's an inherent risk associated with that and people die every year on motorcycles. So there was an interesting conversation between risk versus reward. How much are you willing to have fun versus how much are you willing to to get hurt and Im be impacted um, for, for your family? So I don't know, interesting thoughts. Uh, I know I know you have some thoughts on that. Um, I have lots of thoughts on that. Ready to go. Well, I just think we have a very false sense of control. Mm -hmm. And and I think so I imagine so like my 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 snowboard helmet, I need a new one and it's because I have dents <laughs> in the back of it like dents on it and I'm like when did I hit this thing and when like what what happened? First off, if you're riding a snowboard or a bike or any of these activities without a helmet, like then you're like, there's aspects of it that you're just like, I, in my opinion, you're, you're just dumb. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if I offend anybody, I'm sorry, but you know, if it makes you like consider wearing a helmet, then, you know, mission accomplished. Um, but I just think it's dumb 
Like I just, I, I do. And, and I, you know, you look around the mountain and nowadays it's like so weird to see somebody not wearing a helmet. It's just weird. It just, you know, and yeah, when we were kids, we wore whatever. And like, uh, you know, I was talking to a dude and he's like, man, it's just uncomfortable. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. Like my cup, no. my helmet is like extremely comfortable and it's so warm, warm and it, and, and then when I'm hot, like I open these vents and like steam pours out. It's freaking awesome. Like it's, it's great. Uh, and so, you know, I think there's certain things, but so I just, as you're talking, I Googled, what do you think the leading cause of death in the United States is every year? The leading cause of death. What do you think it is? Um, cardiovascular health. Heart disease. Yeah. Right. Heart disease has been the leading cause of death in the United States since 1950. Since 1950, yeah. heart disease is the leading, leading, leading cause of death, accounting for 29% of all deaths in the country each year. 20, 30% of deaths, one third of deaths almost every single year has to do with things that we don't consider risky. It's our lifestyle. It's what we put in our mouths. It's what we eat. It's people who smoke. It's 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 you know high blood pressure, high high blood pressure, high cholesterol. All things that I would argue are there are some genetic. I'm not gonna sure. I'm not gonna minimize that. But to think that this isn't lifestyle choices um, that most would can, most people don't go to the hamburger you know drive through McDonald's and in that moment think this is really risky behavior. But alas. Number one cause of leading cause of death in the United States to the tune of 29% every year. But we don't look at things that way. Like I look at things like fun. I honestly, if someone said you can never fly fish, uh, ride your bike or, or, or uh, snowboard, those three things. Cause fly fishing is in here. Dude, I just did it for a two day trip on a river going through rapids on the front of a boat. Um, and there were times, especially when I had a fish on, which was awesome. Like the dudes and the, the dude, uh, rowing the boat loved it. I would catch a fish. I'd hook onto a fish right before a rapid and I'm standing <laughs> on the front of the boat and I'm holding on and I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to lose this fish. Like, you know, and he's like, yeah, keep it, work it, work it. And so I'm like, I'm like not paying attention to the rapid in front of me. I'm holding on. But I'm standing up, dude, on the front of a boat. I'm standing on the front of a, a float going through a, a Cat 3 rapid. And I've got a fish on. And it happened multiple times, dude. And it's so fun. And and I was like weaving the – like I'm flipping the fly line, trying to get it around rocks. Because if you get caught, like that's it. Like that – Yeah. you know, one guy, Eric, he got caught on something. The boat kept going. He spooled out, like completely spooled out to, oh, the, to the back. Like he lost his entire fly line on one of his rods. Oh, but that's just the nature of it, right? And there were times when, like, I got slammed sideways, and I'm like, dude, I I could easily see ending up in the water. And that's one of the things they said. They're like, hey, dude, they, they, right before it, he's like, hey, if you fall in the water on this rapid, swim left. On this rapid, swim right. On that, like, it could happen. And dude, when you're in the water, I mean, you don't know what's gonna happen. Like, right. you very easily can get sucked under. You could break a break a bone. You fall the wrong way. You fall onto a rock in the rapid. Like the, the bad things happen. But if somebody told me I couldn't do those things, uh, and 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 I'm saying by choice. I'm not saying like if something happened, I got hurt or whatever, or, or I got sick. I'm not saying that. I'm saying by choice, that would be a slow death for me, and maybe even a fast death. Like I I can't imagine life without the things that I enjoy. Not only from a personal individual level, but I do most of these things with people. Like yeah. I very rarely go snowboarding or mountain biking unless I want to get a workout in. I, I don't go mountain biking by myself and, and I don't typically fish. I, I'll, I'll occasionally fish by myself, but it's like a short trip. I'm not going to do an overnight float by myself. Well, that'd be impossible, but, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? So like there's a level of depth in relationship. There, there's so many things being fed. I'm modeling to my kids what it looks like to potentially be away from home for a couple of days to go do this thing that I love because I tell them I love you guys so much. This is time, this is something I enjoy. Like I encourage you guys, find the thing that you love and and pursue it and do it. Um, all of those aspects of it. And so, and and I think the idea of risk is so it's just so not the idea of risk. I just think the way we analyze risk is so funny to me. It's so interesting. It's like in real estate. Dude, is it better to have one house or a hundred houses in real estate for cash flow? Hundred. A hundred, right? Because then you can offset 
I mean, you can have 50 of them like that don't perform. You have one house that doesn't perform. Like that's the highest level of risk on our, in a rental portfolio is you have one por- you have one property. Right. And yet so many people I talk to, they're like, oh, I, I, I'm going to keep all my, I've talked to people like, I mean, this isn't my position, my situation, but hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. I'm going to keep this money in the bank. I, I, I don't believe in investing in real estate. It's so much risk to buy a house. I'm like, no, with that amount of money, we can get you into like four houses. And that, and then, and that person's like, that is way too much risk. It's, it's one house times four of risk in their mind. I'm like, okay, let me just break this down for you, especially in today's uh, environment. Your money in the bank, you're losing money, significant amounts of money to inflation. Is that risky? Like, you know, you're going to lose money to inflation. Like, you know, and that could be up to five. That could be, I mean, depending on the bank or where you have your money, that could be 10% of your money you're losing every year just to inflation. Is that risky? Like, do you enjoy that? (laughs) <laughs> no, that sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But you haven't analyzed it that way. So, okay, so now you could convert that to houses, assets that will perform in long term. You get multiples. I mean, I've had a, I've been at a point in a personal, you know, in, in a portfolio where I had four properties and two of them just were complete, were just complete suckies. And the other two at least kept me, kept me even, right? right. You know, you and I have a portfolio and, and there's been times where the portfolio has like been terrible, but by the grace of God, and this has been like for six it's months. Still covered the by mortgage. the grace of God, the rest of the properties at least paid the mortgage. We didn't we didn't get crushed. Yeah. Right. And and then and then it gave them time to turn around and perform. My point to all that is, we don't make those kind of a risk, risk assessment. Like we're not honest with risk. That's the problem. We're not honest with risk. Just like we're not honest with fun. Like oh, work is fun. We're not honest with these things that really can make a difference and make an impact on our life, on our joy and our happiness, on the influence we bring around others. Just think about in work, just think about the crotchety old dude who's like a grump in the corner. Like who wants to hang out with, not hang out with, who wants to partner with that dude on a work project? Even if he's the best whatever at what he does, he's just a grumpy fun suck. Like nobody wants to partner with that guy. So what kind of opportunities are lost in that? So you tell me fun's not important. Like you see that guy smile, you see that guy with the ability to do team uh activities and 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 grow in camaraderie relationship. Like now it opens the door to, to opportunities and potential opportunities are money-making opportunities, and potentially he can be a critical aspect of a thing that you're doing, and that's a lot of fun, right? But instead, you're like, dude, that that guy's a joy kill. Like I I can't even, I can't even, I can't, I just can't. Okay. Okay. So what opportunities lost? Two things that just came up and, and thought were one, um, you know, you had mentioned uh the uh, the death rate, like what what causes the most deaths. I think number two is cancer, but I think number three is is car crashes. Yep. And and car crashes because of why people are distracted on their cell phones. Right? You don't think about that. Like you don't think about the risk of looking at a cell phone and while driving, that's pretty risky. It's the number three cause of death Dude, in the United States. It's crazy. And the only reason that it's not like, you know, and I think if you pick age groups, I think it probably, that's very generalized, right? Like I, I looked at it, it said the top three causes of death in the United States are now heart disease, cancer, and preventable injury. Preventable injury, like preventable injury is the number three. Preventable injury. Like that's crazy. Again, I was telling my kids the other day because that now, you know, whatever they have in their hand device or my, my daughter with a cell phone. I'm like, you're looking at your phone approaching the road. You know how many pedestrians are now killed because they walk into the street looking at a cell phone? Not, yeah. not even accidentally. They're, they intend to cross the street. They just can't even look up to look both. Like the most basic thing you tell your kids, look both ways, look both ways. Well, now people in general, not kids even, but like more pedestrians, right? Are dying because they're staring at their damn cell, their phone. And you're like, oh my gosh, dude, you, that is the most risky thing I've seen all day and potentially all week is what you just did. And so again, right? Like how we analyze these things, it's so easy after something happens to say, oh, that's like, I got a neighbor, dude. He was, he's a, he's a beast mountain bike stud does race it like he's a he's a monster 
he ended up uh, on a on an easy dude. He was at, at a Bear Creek where you and I are right on the backside of Carbon. He was going down and and some freak thing, like we've gone down that I don't know fifty. You know, I've gone down that fifty times, a hundred yeah. times, yeah, without incident, and something happened. And this guy rides like in mount like a hundred mile race. It like he's a, he's a monster. 24 hour races at night, like just crazy stuff. We're on this little trail. He's on this little trail falls, dude, he broke like everything and ended up in, uh, uh, he was in a nursing home. He's not an old guy. <laughs> he was a young dude. He ended up in a nursing home just to recover because he had so many injuries and now he's back at it. Right. Like that guy can't, you can't imagine, he can't imagine not riding his bike. That would be death for him. Yeah. And, and so when you look at it though, like his, the likelihood of him getting in a car crash is, is, is also pretty high. Like, are you never going to leave your house again? I, I don't know. Right. And so I think you have to be smart. You control what you control. You, there's no guarantee, dude, that today you go to the grocery store or your wife goes to the grocery store. There's no guarantee that some dude isn't looking at his cell phone and runs, runs a red light and T-bones your car. Like there's no guarantee. Actually, yeah. that's more likely than you breaking yourself on your mountain bike again. No, that's a really good point. So it's like, hmm, how do you, how do you, the risk conversation when you say, is it worth it? Especially after an injury is a, is a very low hanging fruit and it's an easy target, right? Because what if you go play pickleball, this has happened Aaron and, ACL. and it's not unusual and you tear your ACL, like, yeah. That that's a recovery. There's a a mom up the road. She she did something with her meniscus, dude. She's down for eight weeks, and and that's a piece of cartilage in your knee that I think she walks. Like that's what she does for you know she she I think she goes to the gym and she walks. I don't know how she tore her knee, but like okay, so are you gonna stop walking? Yeah, because she, she tripped on the curb or something. I mean I don't know that that's really what happened, but I mean my dad uh, blew out his. Achilles, we were at the beach and him and Adam were just kind of messing around and he just stepped back and there was a little bit of a shelf and he stepped off of it and boom. Talk about a long recovery, bro. Achilles, that sucks. So you're never going to go to the beach again? Like we weren't even like doing anything. We were just, we we're at the beach. It was Thanksgiving. Yeah. Right? So like, what do you, how do you really... I would much rather be intentional with the fun I'm going to have, prepare for it, plan for it, be careful, have a helmet, have gear. Do, and, and then you you do your thing. Dude, I almost ran over a rattlesnake the other day and I got stung in the head by a, like, I can't, <laughs> you can't. I, be. I don't know, you know what it was, man. A whole face was swollen. It was going down in my eye. And so am I never going to ride again? It was the same day too. It was the rattlesnake and then the, the stinking bee or whatever it was. So I, I just think it's really important for us to it's easy when you don't assess the importance of these things holistically passion why purpose um relationship it when you don't give it that level of of care the risk piece becomes the the why not the the purpose of why you don't it becomes overblown um and 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 it just I think the conversation is fascinating, but dude, after an injury, man, like that, that is, it just is right. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I, I show up for my family, for my spouse, for my kids so much better as a better man. Like after I've, you know, done something fun, you know, with you or with, with the guys, like going on a mountain bike ride early in the morning or going snowboard and come back. I show up differently. I show up better, right? I'm more present with them. I'm happier. I'm filled with joy. I'm a better, I'm a better dude because I go and have fun in the mountains, you know, with you or with, with our guys here. And my kids look at me differently when I'm the only dad in the pool. Right. My kids are proud. Like they, they look up to me. Like they want to be with me. They want to hang with me. They're like, yeah, that's my dad. That's my dad in the pool throwing all the kids. Right. He's the fun dad. Like they, they have a different view of me because of the way I show up for them. 
And like, that's really important, man. Like that's really powerful like, to be, to be the dad who's there, who your kids look up to you. They want to be with who they want to hang out with. Like, who's like, that's my dad. That's my dad playing on the playground. That's my dad throwing the kids in the pool. That's my dad doing the pillow fight. That's my dad starting the, the dance party, you know, like that to me is, is worth it all. Yeah, man. One, your wife, wives look at you different, right? Hundred percent. And, and yeah, like and my other, my wife was, my wife was. Uh, we went to a, a a pool party before I got hurt, and I was the dad in the pool, throwing all the kids, and and my wife was was on the side on the side, like taking video and, and a picture, and she was like, "Look at this! Like this, how much is like look how much the kids were having fun." Like she was proud of me, right? Like she's like, "Yeah, that's my husband." Yeah. Right. Like she looks at me differently. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, I, I think it's, I think we, we do ourselves a disservice to allow. Um, and, and look, the 14 er when, when, when they said which one they want to go do, I was, I was out. I was like, I mean, I already had stuff planned, but I was like, I, I'm not interested. Yeah. And, and I think it's okay. Again, when you know yourself and you know, um, you've taken the time to say one, do I enjoy this Two, Like I would love to be with those dudes, but I don't like 14 or as much as you do for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I surely am not like that one to me wasn't worth it. And one of the guys in the group, he highlighted, he's like, I, I stopped this, 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 and this all things I love to pursue this, 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 and this also things I love. I, I make an assessment. I, I'm, I'm very intentional and active about these things because this, in all reality, getting hurt doing this is not worth it. But if I got hurt doing this, eh, that's a different story because I can't imagine my life without this, right? Yeah. And so, so I think, you know, again, it boils down to intentionality and like be honest with yourself. Um, yeah. Longs, I was like, no, nah, dude, I'm like, even if it was going to go and I, and my calendar cleared up, I, I would, I wouldn't go on that trip because it just, it just like there's certain things I know about myself. And I mean, even the fact that, you know, my knee doesn't bend all the way because of seven knee surgeries. Like I know I saw the limitations of that trying to go up the boulders and make sure my son wasn't, you know, I wanted to see what he did. And I'm like, man, the ability to bend your knees fully, that, that's, a, that's a pretty important thing when you're climbing rocks. And, and so like, it just isn't, it's out, it's not in the cards and that's yeah. okay. I think we do those things, right? But but I would say honesty again. If you're gonna assess and cut things out of your life, then at least be honest with yourself and do a little bit of research and understand. Okay, I'm not gonna do this activity that was actually really good for my cardiovascular health because I get a workout out of it and I really enjoy it and I love it. And instead, I'm going to do nothing. Hey, that that you may actually be upping your risk factor by multiples because now you don't now you're not exercising because you don't enjoy what you know, you don't enjoy an alternative that's quote unquote safer. So now you're just not going to do it. Oh, guess what? You may be joining the 29% of people quicker that die because of health. So again, like be honest, be honest with the assessment and like no kidding. If you're going to do risk, be educated on it. Cause like, there's nothing like when, when somebody who has a lot of money and they're like, I'm keeping it in the bank. When that person tells me that I'm like, that's, that's just ignorant. And they, and they blame risk. I'm like that. That's actually just ignorant. Like you just, if you have another reason, cool, but you have a reason. Cause you thought about it, right? I, hey, right. I just, I'm risk averse to everything. I know I'm losing money here, but like, I'm cool with that because it makes me feel good. All right, cool, man. That's an intentional decision. That's backed by research that you've done for yourself. And it it is it is feeding how you're created. Cool, like good. But just to be like, nah, nah, nah owning houses is risky. I'm gonna keep my money in the bank. Like that's just dumb, straight up, right? <laughs> like if that's your reason, that's just dumb because you have no context for it. Yeah. So again, people who are like, I'm not gonna go do this thing. I'm, I'm not gonna go with you to do fun because I might get hurt. Okay, cool. That's just dumb. Like enjoy heart disease. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, right? Like that, that sounds even less fun. Enjoy heart disease. Um, which I'm not trying to make light of it, but again, it's, it's a true. life. A lot of these things are decisions we make. If you put some effort into finding something fun, you might realize, oh, I love 
paddle boarding. Cool. Great workout and relatively low risk. Although I just saw a dude going down that river on a paddleboard, bro. I was like, Oof. how does this even, I don't even understand how that works, Dang. but whatever. So anyways, intentionality, it's back to what we talk about, right? All these things. Yeah. Fun is an action verb, but, um, and it's a noun, but, but make it, make fun, not a noun that you observe, make it an action verb that you're intentional about, right? Like be the person in those three areas, fun with family fun with your friends and fun as an individual, make those three lists, make them 10 deep, get to know yourself a little better, and then take that list and put it on your calendar and start scheduling these things in to, to, to live a more full, rich, potential, potentially healthier life. Love it, dude. Put the phone down. And put the phone down, dude, to, 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 uh, uh, two hand activities or, or, you know, get in the water and, you know, (laughs) that, that, that'll, that'll dissuade you from taking your phone. But, but really to your point that summed up is be present, right? right. Just be present. Have a strong desire to be where you're at in the moments that you have to be in those places to include work. Nobody, I don't want to be your business partner. If all you're doing is taking phone calls from your wife and thinking about your kids all day. Like uh, that's not, that's also not honoring that aspect of your life. Right. That's right. Good stuff, man. Fun conversation. Yeah. Heal up so we can go do some fun stuff. <laughs> well, heal up so you can join me in some of these fun things yeah, right. that I'm doing. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Connect Man podcast. If you are growth-minded, community-focused, and willing to take uncommon action to redefine success and live an abundant life, visit our website at www.thekineticman.com to see all the ways we can connect. And on our website, you can find more information on everything we're doing, like joining our meetup page to get the details on our webinars and our local Thursday gatherings here in Colorado. From our site, you can also find more information on and sign up for the next Kinetic Man retreat and the next house of our mastermind group. Finally, we always appreciate your love and support. Please share this episode and go rate us on your favorite podcast player of choice. Thank you again. Now go take uncommon action.